If I could go back in time and just say one thing to my younger self that would make my whole life just a little bit better, that would improve the quality of everything that I did and enhance the value of every single moment, I would tell myself to make death my constant companion. I know that sounds crazy and maybe the opposite of what you were thinking. You say, wouldn't you give yourself a stock tip, you know, buy Apple, something like that? No. I think in order for life to have any meaning, we need to embrace our death. I've seen a lot of death in my own life with my friends, some who continued their reckless lives after the rest of us grew up, some who just came to you know, chronic diseases associated with overconsumption. Others, you know, were just unlucky. I've seen it happen in my own family. Hell, I've even had really great dogs that passed away. The thing that most people don't understand about death is that it provides value to life. In a world of duality, where we see good and evil, up and down, good and bad, life and death. It's the contrast that creates the value. And without death, life is meaningless. If you were to live forever, every moment would become so much less important. It's only because of death that this moment is critically important. The irony is, is that we spend most of our time trying not to think about death too much, because most of us are pretty scared of it. But if you can embrace your own death and make it your constant companion, it changes the way you see the world. It changes the way you see your own life. It makes every moment just a little bit more critically important. It makes you not take anything for granted. If you ever had to go through any kind of a loss, a divorce, loss of a job, uh, loss of a loved one, one of the things that you can do to really stem the pain is appreciate what you have. And it's not just what you have in terms of physical things, but who you have. I think that my divorce helped bring that into very stark reality for me because my preconceived idea of what my life was had ended and I sort of had to restart the whole thing from a different perspective. And that was critically, critically important because it was through that, that process that I was able to really um, grow to appreciate, you know, these trails in the woods, the dogs, my kids, um, my extended family, all the people that around me that were very supportive of me going through that process. And it even allowed me on some level to appreciate my ex-wife um, for the role that she played in my life. So I think that death is really, really important to have as a companion. I don't know if any of you guys have ever read Carlos Castaneda. He was one of these, uh, you know, probably, I wouldn't call him psychedelic, but he was sort of writing from a, the perspective of a guy who had gone into Native American and Mexican world and discovered some of the natural psychedelics that the shaman used for um, expanding consciousness. And um, one of the things that he did is he sort of called himself a, a warrior and he talked about the warrior's way and how um, through expanding consciousness and becoming very intimately familiar with death and its role in your life, you can enhance each and every moment. How every sound, every, every sunrise, every leaf that falls, every bird that tweets, everything takes on a whole new significance, a new meaning. Something that, um, that as my younger self, I 
didn't even think about, you know. My younger self was caught up in the drama of life. It was caught up in the drama of trying to find a path forward, trying to figure out who I was going to be and what I was going to do and what life was going to be like. Yeah, now my older self, as I get closer to death and I start thinking about it, and I see death on a regular basis, um, I understand just how powerful it is to help us achieve and to become what and who we want to be. It also helps us differentiate the silliness and the drama of daily life. You know, in some of my videos in the past, I've talked a lot about, you know, relationships and, you know, transactional nature of relationships. And, and on some level, that is true. On a very physical level, you know, in living in this world, that is true. But on a much broader, much deeper, much more enlightened perspective, it's all bullshit. I mean, it really is. Because if you really do find someone that is um, ideal for you, hopefully you can bring your relationship to a point where it transcends that transactional nature. You can bring your relationship to a place where it takes on more of a spiritual um, partnership, something that goes way beyond um, something that can be measured by laws and courts and you know, psychological theories about relationships because that's really what everybody wants. That's really what we're hoping for. But most people don't know it. And I think if you can get a handle on your own death, if you can come to terms with living with the idea that you're going to die on a regular basis and you realize that every single moment you have is critically important, that it changes the way you approach everything. It changes the way you approach women, relationships, dogs, houses, children, parents, friends, clients, YouTube channels. It changes everything. So that's the advice I'd give myself. That's the advice I'd take back to the past and I'd give it to my 18-year-old self. I'd say, embrace your death. Make friends with death. Let death be your, your constant companion. Because it's through death that you find life. And it's only when you can truly appreciate each and every moment that you have that life becomes rich and meaningful and has value beyond what can be measured. And isn't that what we all really want in the end? When we're talking about economics, when something appreciates, it goes up in value. And the same is true when we're talking about anything else in life. A big part of the reason why a lot of um, relationships fail, whether in marriages or just, you know, relationships in general, is because there's a lack of appreciation by one or both people in that relationship. One person is not in charge of the other person's ability or desire to appreciate the other. So if you're in a relationship and you're trying to ensure that it endures, then the only thing you can do is to appreciate it as much as you can, is to see the value that that relationship brings to you and just appreciate the fact that that person is sharing their most valuable asset with you. That asset, of course, is the time of their life. And you can take that down to almost any level you want. I mean, obviously there's the big relationships in your life, you know, your partner, your children, your parents, your extended family, your friends, that sort of thing. But also you can take it down to every single human being that you happen to come in contact with on a daily basis. Because when you do that, it changes your perspective on everything and everyone. So when you just take a moment to appreciate the cashier that's checking you out at the grocery store, that in this weird little moment where you are having this interaction with this person that on some level seems relatively meaningless, but on another level has the potential to be extremely meaningful. And here, for whatever reason, your time and their time have crossed. You are sharing one or two or three of the moments that you have in your life that you will never get refunded with them. I don't know why it happens but it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to enhance that moment. 
And if you take that opportunity and you make that moment better, then it appreciates. Your whole life appreciates. Um, that's the that's the oxymoron. That's the, the, the conundrum when it comes to life. And especially living in a society that's based on consumerism is we live under the belief system that if we give something away, that we are going to lose something. And actually, it's completely the opposite. So when you give something away, you almost always get something in return. In fact, no, it's a guarantee you're going to get something in return. What you get in return and how valuable it is depends essentially on what you value. If you're trying to exchange a gift for money, well then you're missing it because money in the scheme of things has very little value. Somebody asked me in the comments once, um, how do you think your life would have been if you didn't have the career that you had? And I think it would have been about the same, quite honestly. I mean, I was always good at making money from the time that I was very young. For other Gen Xers, man, my parents didn't give me money. There was no such thing as allowance. So that meant I had to mow lawns. I had to deliver newspapers, collect you know, refundable bottles, re recyclable bottles. Um, I was very uh, entrepreneurial from a very young age. I think I had a paper route when I was 11. And um, all the way through college, I worked constantly. I mean, I, I haven't stopped working since I was 10, 11, 12, in that range, whether it be mowing lawns, pet sitting, uh, delivering newspapers, bottles. Anyway, my point is, money comes and goes. You can always get more money. If you think you can't get money and you live in the United States, you're just not trying hard enough. There's lots and lots and lots of opportunities. You just may have to do things that you don't want to do. You may have to work for it. You may have, it may not be easy. But if you live here in the United States and you need more money, you just need to apply a little creativity to this situation. And I guarantee you, you'll come up with a half dozen ways that you can make money by the end of the week. Um, now, it's going to be hard. You know, it won't necessarily be easy. But I guarantee you, it'll be a lot easier than you think it's going to be at the beginning. Um, but anyway, back on track to things of value. Money has no value. Money is, um, is something that comes and goes. It's transient. You're not going to take it with you when you die. Um, it can help people make their lives a little bit easier. And um, giving money away to people who need it at times when they need it has extraordinary value. It has extraordinary value. But what has real value is the time in your life and your ability to appreciate the people and the things and the, the animals and the opportunities and really enjoy them to their fullest and appreciate the fact that they are in your life. When you do that, they increase in value. And as the events and the people and the things in your life increase in value, your overall life experience improves. It just can't help it. I mean, everything becomes more valuable. Everything increases in value. Everything appreciates. And the way that it appreciates is through your physical act of appreciation. It's really just that simple. The more you appreciate it, the better it gets. It works wonders, not only to help you get through difficult times, like a divorce or a death or job change or whatever, but it, it works miracles just on a day-to-day -day basis, just to make your life better. So, like I said at the beginning of this video, death gives everything value. Because without death, life has no value. It's basic economics, you know, it's supply and demand. If there's an enormous supply of something, say you can live forever, then the value of it's gonna drop. It has no meaning to people if you live forever. But if you have the illusion that you're going to die, if you believe that this physical life is gonna die, and you take that with you every single day, all the time, um, then every single moment that you have becomes so much more valuable. And a quiet day, standing in the beautiful forest, looking at this crystal clear, spring-fed stream running under my feet, basically, filled with all these little tiny fish, the birds squeaking in the background, squirrels running up and down trees, 
deer running around. It's just, uh, yeah, you just can't help but um, appreciate it, you know? And the more you appreciate it, the more valuable it gets. And the more valuable it gets, the better your life gets. And the better your life gets, the more you appreciate it. And it becomes this incredible cycle of everything just getting a little bit better all the time. So although, you know, I love, you know, talking about, you know, the frustrations and the difficulties that people face in their relationships, but that's really just on a physical level, you know. I mean, it's funny and it's amusing. And yes, we all um, can identify with those experiences but they're all occurring at a certain level of consciousness. In order to really achieve a level of happiness and joy in your life, you need to transcend that. You need to transcend all the drama because the drama is meaningless in the long run. You know, what really matters is um, achieving that peace of mind and uh, that level of happiness in your life where you can then affect other people in a positive way. Because at the end of the day, You've got to give it all away because you can't take any of it with you, right? All right, you guys. That's all I got. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or ideas or thoughts you want to share with me, please put them in the comments. I love reading your comments. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Stay healthy. And if you can, stay single.